Hey, can you pull over at this gas station at the next corner? Because I want to stop and leave a track so I can get my time started. Okay, I'm ready to go now. Let's hurry up and get to the Kingdom Hall so we can meet the group for field service before we're late. You're listening to The Critical Thought, where we challenge our listeners to use critical thinking when examining the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses. Hey, this is JT with The Critical Thought. I just want to say thank you to all those who said how much they appreciated the podcast that we did on Why Jehovah's Witnesses Count Time. If you haven't had an opportunity, I invite you to go back over and listen to it, where we show people how that Jehovah's Witnesses show that the counting of time is a requirement of God. That's right. The Watchtower stated that counting time is a requirement of God. Somewhere along the way, God changed his mind, but it started out as a requirement of God. So if you get the chance, please listen to it and share with me what your comments are on it. In this podcast, we're going to expand that, and that is how Jehovah's Witnesses count time. Now, this is fascinating. You see, because Jehovah's Witnesses have to count time, it has led many of them over the years to coming up with some very, very creative ways of counting time. Now, the group that's normally impacted the most by the need to come up with creative ways of counting time is typically your regular pioneers. Over the years, the society has changed the number of hours that a pioneer needs to get, but at the end of the day, they're the ones who are under the gun because they have a specific requirement. Now, among your regular average publishers, you will rarely, if ever, hear this phrase, getting your time started. Now, pioneer, they understand what it means to get your time started. And over the years, the way pioneers have got their time started is really amazing. For example, some pioneers on their way to the Kingdom Hall to meet with the group, they will maybe stop by to see someone who's a return visit or even stop in like a 7-Eleven and leave a track with someone in 7-Eleven. At that point, for some pioneers, they're like, hey, I'm starting my time right now. Now, what they do is they do a little thing called keeping your time going. Now, that's like sitting out with a cab out in front of your house and the cab got the meter still running. That's kind of the best way to understand what it means to keep your time running. So for years, pioneers many times would go into the Kingdom Hall and their time is sitting there running while everybody else hasn't even got their time started yet. The pioneers like, well, I started at 9 o'clock. I don't know about the rest of y'all. I'm already counting my time. And so now they got their time started. So when they actually go out and knock on doors, the pioneers like, well, I already got an hour in. And everybody in the car group was like, how you get out in? We just got the first door. <laughs> I started my time back at 7-Eleven. So this is what this counting of time creates. People having to come up with these unusual ways of counting time. So as you look at it, you begin to see the critical thinking questions come up. Does this really sound like something that God would institute? Or does this sound like definitely an idea put together by a group of guys sitting around some conference room tables? When you look at the history of how this process of counting time has developed and changed, it's absolutely amazing. And when you tell a non-Jehovah's Witness that this is what Jehovah's Witnesses are doing, they are literally in like total disbelief. It's like, you mean to tell me you got to report how much time you talk to people about God to the main office? I mean, it's just amazing. And so as Jehovah's Witnesses, we never just stopped and thought about, this makes no sense, the counting of time. Not the way in which the Watchtower does it. Now, we know that the society says the reason we're counting time is because we need to know how many presses and how many rolls of paper to get. Well, that sounds reasonable until the fact that you find out the person got to put his name up there. So if you just want a count of how many magazines and how many presses you need to buy, you don't need my name. But we need your name because something else is used with the time. And we'll get into that a little later on. But for right now, we're going to just share some experiences about the creative ways that pioneers have counted time. Another real popular technique that many pioneers used was called multiple Bible studies in the same household. Now, this is pretty cool. See, you would have like a pioneer. Let's say you have a pioneer sister. She starts studying with this lady. This lady has three daughters. She has a daughter, 17, 
15 and 13. So what the pioneer would do, she would set up a Bible study with each individual, which gives her four Bible studies in one house. So she gets to count four hours every time she comes into this house, she gets to count four Bible studies. And when the winter comes, oh man, she can just linger forever and just get her time and she stays indoors. When I was at Bethel, we used to sit around and we would tell stories about what it was like pioneering our territories back home. And, you know, most of us, we had, you know, basic experience of was like pioneering and so forth. Uh, one of the most popular techniques that was often used was the driving around technique. Now, if you lived in certain parts of the country, your territory is huge. Sometimes it, it extends the entire county. And so what you do, you would do a one return visit on the south side of the county and drive all the way over to the north side and do a call over there and drive all the way back. And you would do that for hours. And this is how a lot of the pioneers got their time. This is just the way it was. The system, the process caused people to try to look for creative ways of how can I get my time? How can I get my time? And so you had witnesses who have been pioneering for years. In fact, what's most interesting is most of these techniques were ones that the older pioneers passed on to the newer pioneers. You'll be out in the cargo and you have a sister or a brother who's been pioneering 10, 15 years, and they'll say, let me give you a suggestion. I can get your time now. So and 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 so. So it just gets passed down from person to person, these techniques for getting time. Now, one of the statements that's often made about the pioneers is that the pioneers in a congregation, they're supposed to be setting an example or taking the lead in the congregation so that others will have the opportunity to pioneer with them or work with them as publishers or auxiliary pioneers and so forth. Now, counting time was interesting. One of the Bethelites, especially the guys from California. Now, California Bethelites and California Witnesses, they're special. I mean, they're special. They, as we used to say, they have like a worldly streak in them. But it was interesting how when you would listen to the Bethelites from California, how they would talk about how they used to bank their hours. Now, banking your hours is when you go out and get more hours than you actually are required to have for the month. And so on your report, you would just put down 70 or 90 hours or whatever, 100 hours or whatever was required under that system that the society was operating with. Anything over and above that, you bank that for next month. Now, the boys in California, they took it to a whole different level. I mean, a whole different level. This is what these guys do, especially guys down in Southern California. My flights was telling us how, man, this was common practice in the circuit, man. Everybody knew about this. So you would have a pioneer. These guys would go to the Kingdom Hall. they go to the meeting, Thursday night meeting, Tuesday night meeting, whatever. After the meeting, they would head out to all the gas stations, 7-Eleven. They would be out in service after the meeting, just leaving tracks for everybody for an hour or two. They rolled back home about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. So they would bank their hours. And because the weather in Southern California is so nice, you wouldn't have the problem that pioneers had like in West Wisconsin or North Dakota. Then those places, what you did, you got all your time as much as you could get doing the summer because in the winter time you could have a hard time getting your hours so but the ones in california they had it down to a science these guys would get all of their time in like five and six months now what happened after they got their time for the year did they go out and feel service <laughs> not hardly you see they was like well i got my time now the whole purpose of the pond is was they were supposed to be at the kingdom hall helping the other friends and, and teaching the new ones and so forth a lot of the California Buffaloes and California Pioneers, they're like, hey, I got my time in six months. I'm off for the rest of the year. You see, this entire concept of counting time creates this type of mindset as part of people's worship. Where the teaching of people about Jesus takes a back seat to me getting my time. Because if I don't get my time, I can't stay on the Pioneers list. For a number of years, regular Pioneers, they had to send their time into the society on a little special card. And if they didn't get their time for the month, they had to put down the reason they did not get their time. And I'm going to tell you, over the years, pioneers, they just sweated. I mean, they just felt so unworthy. Just, I have been a failure this month, Lord. I have just failed, Jehovah. I have just failed in my responsibilities as a regular pioneer. And I am so sorry. I mean, this is the type of stuff they would write to the society. 
Now, unbeknown to them, when it got down to the service department, there were some guys in the service department who laughed at it. I'm going to be honest with you. They laughed at it. And we know they laughed at it because what some of the guys would do is they would actually take some of the excuses and they would write them down. And eventually there was actually a little piece of paper that was going around Bethel with all the different types of excuses that pioneers used to have. And some, of, I'm going to be honest with you, some of it was hilarious. But it's just interesting how that these people, when they sent these cards in with their excuses to the society, they was just thinking how much of a spiritual failure they was for not living up to their godly obligation to get the time that Jehovah required. Well, we, we know that they kind of changed their teaching about Jehovah requiring hours. But anyway, so these people felt like a failure. Yet when it came into Brooklyn, the people, the guys down the service department, people were laughing at them. And little did they know that. Now, one of the most interesting examples of a creative way of counting time was one that happened out in the Chicago area. I know about it because my roommate was telling us about it. Now, it's interesting what happened. You see, the Pioneers was at the end of the month, and this particular sister didn't have all her hours. She was short about 10 hours. So it's the last day of the month. So what she did, she went and got a newspaper, and she went and looked through the obituary page. Sister Girl sat down and wrote a letter, and it took about an hour to write the letter. Then she went out and she Xeroxed it 10 times. She then took 10 letters and mailed them to 10 different families. She got all the obituaries and she got her 10 hours. Now, as you all know, whenever someone knows something good, they want to share with everybody. So what did she do? She started telling other pioneers, girl, if you want to get your hours and you get a little tight, just go get the obituary pages, write you a letter about an hour, and just Xerox 8, 9, 10, 15 copies, whatever you need for your time, and send that to the folks in the obituary, send it to the family, and you got your time. Well, of course, you know that kind of stuff gets around like wildfire. And sure enough, it did. And the sister of seer heard about it, and he had to shut it down. But once again, the critical thinking, what is it that has driven these people to feel that they have to do this to maintain a standing before God? This entire concept of how the society counts time is very sad. It's very sad because people, they believe they're standing before God is on the line. And that is why in the original piece that we did on counting time, a requirement of God, it shows that the society introduced this entire concept under the guise of this is required by God. Of course, over the years, the society has made the decision to lower the hours that's required to be an auxiliary pioneer and a regular pioneer. The reason they cite it is so that more individuals can join the ranks of the pioneers and the auxiliary pioneers. Well, that is true. By lowering the hours, it will have more people join the ranks. But that's not the whole story. I recall we had a circuit overseer who explained to us that every September we see the number of regular pioneers that come on the list, and it's very impressive over the years. Unfortunately, what we don't see, as he often would tell us, is how many pioneers come off the list. So the society, they decided what we'll do is we'll lower the hours, and therefore more people can be regular pioneers. It kind of reminds you of a school district that has set as a standard that grade point 93 to 100 will count as an A, and anything below that will count as Bs, Cs, and Ds. And so in order to increase the number of A students that they have, the school district says, well, we're going to lower it down to 83 instead of 93. So if you make an 83 and up, you get an A. So from a strictly numerical standpoint, the school looks like it's producing geniuses. But in reality, they've changed the standard, which creates the increase in the numbers. And that's really what the society has done. And the way the society has the structure set up for regular pioneers is really interesting. When I was pioneering years ago, when we signed up, you agreed that you would get a thousand hours for the year. And I remember seeing pioneers who couldn't make their thousand hours. You know, they got sick or they had family responsibility, had, you know, definite family, whatever. And you would just see how depressed they would be because they just felt they were failing. I had agreed with the society that I would get a thousand hours and, and I can't make it and, and it's just getting frustrated. Well, little did the sister know she didn't have to get a thousand hours. She only had to get 720. And so the elders didn't tell you that all you really got to do is get 720 and you still can stay on the list, but we're not going to tell you so you'll be out there hustling and get that thousand. And so, <laughs> and so, 
You're thinking to yourself, well, why do you just tell us it's only 720 hours a year instead of walking around telling people they need a thousand hours? And so these little systems, these little backdoor systems that the society has, it's just amazing. One thing that many people have never heard of is called the Pioneer Infirm List. Now, if you want to see how Jehovah's Witnesses, they say that we're not interested in titles, <laughs> please. This is an arrangement that the service department has so that a pioneer can keep their status, can keep their title as a pioneer. So the pioneer and firm list is a list that a pioneer can get on if they've been pioneering for a number of years and now they can no longer get their hours. Well, the elders can write a letter to the society service department and they'll put the person on the pioneer and firm list. So among the congregation and among the friends, and at the circuit and district overseer, they'll be presented as a regular pioneer. And you're thinking, man, they clocking, you know, 70 hours a month, you know, 100 hours a month, you know, 90 hours a month, whatever on the program they happen to be working on at that time. But in actuality, they turned in six hours a month. And so a lot of people never heard of the pioneer infirmness because it's not discussed. It's not talked about. So you have a sister who's hustling with three kids to get her time. And this older sister, like, <laughs> I'll just go out one day a month and I steal a pioneer just like you. And so <laughs> this is the type of systems that are in place that at the end of the day, critical thinking says, what does this have to do with serving God? Nothing. If a person can't get the hours, then why are they, why are they calling themselves a pioneer? So these are statuses that are bestowed upon people because this is the status that the organization presents to people. That's why we have auxiliary pioneers and regular pioneers. They're just status symbols. That's all. If a person wanted to do 90 hours a month, 70 hours a month, they could just do it and turn it in and call it a day. But no, I'm going to do it and be recognized and acknowledge. It's almost like on the jobs. It's like at some sales companies. You a gold ribbon, blue ribbon, and so forth. And so that's basically what we're looking at. But this type of system, what it does, it produces in people a desire to maintain it at any cost. And so you have a person who is chasing these titles, chasing these positions, thinking if I don't do it, I'm failing God. You see, the question is, is this something that God would require of people? Is this something that God would expect of people? When you introduce a concept such as counting time and tell people it is a requirement of God, as this is how the original foundation upon which the concept of counting time was built, that's very sad. But hey, we just wanted to share some examples of just how creative some people can go to when it comes to counting time. This has been JT with the Critical Thought. This program was sponsored by Critical Thinkers.